Minds. I'm Diane Dayton. Well, love is in the air. We're with Reverend Rini Panzini. We're going to talk about weddings. We're going to talk about matchmaking and all those wonderful things that she does that you may want to be a part of. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Rini. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, you have been in the Lancaster area since 2009, but you're mm -hmm. originally from Brooklyn. I am. I am originally from Brooklyn, so I'm a transplant. Yes, and you love it here, and I know we love mm -hmm. having you here, too. Thanks. So you started doing weddings in 2009, mm -hmm. right? And this was with the new seminary for interfaith studies in New York City. Yeah. So what made you decide you wanted to do weddings? Well, when I lived in Brooklyn, I had a, a business, a storefront, and it was called Do Me a Favor. Mm. And I did favors and invitations and a lot of wedding stuff then. And I loved being in the wedding industry. And then we closed up and we moved to Lancaster. And I said, well, what am I going to do while I'm here? I didn't want to open a store. You know, I didn't know the area. And um, I was always kind of interested in different religions as well. Mm -hmm. I went to Catholic school, but I always wanted to know about other stuff. So I woke up one morning and I said to my husband, I'm going to be an interfaith minister. And he said, what is that? I don't even know what that is. And I said, I don't either, but I'm going to find a way. So I went online and I found the new seminary back in Manhattan. So for two years, my first two years living here, I went back every other weekend to Manhattan for classes. Mm -hmm. And after two years, I was ordained. Wow. And then I started doing weddings because I loved being in the wedding industry and I kind of wanted to do weddings, but I wanted to do something having to do with the different religions and blending them. So that's yeah. what happened. And the name of your officiating business is I Do For mm -hmm. All, which really is I Do For All. Ex yeah. Expound on that. So I Do For All, um, I used to be when, when marriage equality was not a law, mm -hmm. I was a Lancaster organizer for Marriage Equality USA. So, and that was for same-sex marriages. Um, when I had to get a new license plate, I wanted something that showed, you know, everybody should be able <laughs> to love and get married, and how much can you put on a license plate? Right. But I came up with, I do for all. So okay. Everybody should be able to be married. Yeah. So when we talk about interfaith, we are talking about a lot mm -hmm. of different faiths. Expound a little bit on yeah. that. So um, in seminary, we had a weekend, every other weekend was about a different faith. So you can't learn everything and you can't learn about every religion because there's hundreds, right. if not more. So um, we learned a lot of the traditions of certain religions and I, with weddings, put them together. So we, I do Jewish Christian weddings, um, Christian Muslim weddings, I've done Indian weddings. So I have a little background about a little bit of everything. Okay, so when you go about doing this as an officiant, mm -hmm. as the person who is marrying the couple, how do you go about doing this? I know you put a real personal touch into that, Rainy. Yeah, I try to because I know the couples, they're so in love and they're not um, really experienced with how a ceremony should go. So what I do is I have a layout of all the parts of a ceremony, but within that layout, there are some things that legally have to be in there to make it a wedding ceremony and make it legal. Yeah. And there are things that you don't have to do at all. So I always have the couple fill out a questionnaire and I call it the ceremony profile. And okay. that has a lot of questions about what kind of readings they might want or mm -hmm. if they want to have anything religious, they don't have to. Um, and then I meet with them at least once and we talk about how they met and stuff like that. And then I write their ceremony, and then we go back and forth, and whatever they don't like, I change or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and work it out that way. So yeah. what are the things that you have to have in the ceremony? To have a legal wedding legal. ceremony, mm -hmm. you have to have the I do's, yes. which is, you know, the traditional and sickness and in health, blah, 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 I do. Yes, right. And the pronouncement at the end, when I say with the authority given to me by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I now pronounce you husband and wife or okay. husband and husband. Um, and that is the two legal things that you need. So you could have a one-minute ceremony. If you, <laughs> you could. Yeah, and, and you I, could. On no one occasion, there have been some shorter sure, ones yeah. and longer ones, too. Yeah. yeah, that's the beauty of it. You can craft mm -hmm. something that's so unique and so personal. Right. And that makes a big difference. Yeah. Do you have any idea 
how many people you've married so far. Can you make a... I want to say, I try to figure it out, and I can't be exact, but around 2,500. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of yeah, people, isn't that's it? that's a lot. That's a lot of people. You've gotten a lot of wonderful feedback, too. Yeah. And like uh, Nicole and Teddy said that you made their ceremony perfect for them, that you were amazing at listening and cultivating the ceremony for the life and love that people want to celebrate. Yeah. And isn't that what is that does yeah. your heart good to hear that sort right. of thing, doesn't it? Yes. And I think also um, there's no one else that they would trust as much as you. This comes from Eric and Dustin. Um, as a matchmaker, too, which yeah. is the thing that we're going to get into, you're doing your intuition when writing the wedding ceremony was so spot on that they didn't have a note when uh, you shared the first draft. Yeah. So that has a lot to do with the listening that you do and yeah. how you craft it. Yeah, I, I try to do a lot of listening and I try to have the couple tell me a lot of things, even if it's not pertaining to a ceremony, just yeah. so I can kind of get their personality. And, you know, some people do better with a light hearted ceremony. Some people are very serious. So I try to get that out of them. Absolutely. And I'm sure with some of the ceremonies, they don't always go the way that they're typically planned. No, sometimes. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happens, mm -hmm. you kind of go with the flow. Is right. there anyone that you can share without naming names, uh, something that happened that you kind of had to really think on your feet? Um, yeah. Actually, I have, I had a couple that um, they were they were a great couple. They were in their 30s, I would say, so they weren't young and naive. And we, you know, planned the ceremony. They okayed it and everything. We got to the ceremony spot, which was in their yard. They had a big tent. It was beautiful. Right. And when I got up to the part where I said, may I have the rings to the best man, he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and then I looked around and I said, well, where are the rings? And then the groom said, I gave them to the maid of honor. And the maid of honor said, you never gave me the rings. And so then the bride almost started crying. So I right away, um, you know, think on my feet. I said, okay, it's no big deal. We're going to get rings from two very special people. So I got her mother's ring oh, wow. and his father's ring. And mm. they used that for the wedding. But, you know, it was a memory. They oh, made absolutely. a memory. And it was all, it was good. It was fine. And they found the rings later. And they found the rings later, yeah. Do we know where? It was up in the bedroom. Oh, okay, of yeah. course. <laughs> but see, that's really important, too, mm -hmm. when you're officiating and you're doing anything yeah. like that, any type of uh, performance, as mm -hmm. it were. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to think on your feet and put yes. this together. And I think that's something yeah. that um, was written here, too. So you have decided you're going to be a matchmaker, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of something you've been doing for a long time, yeah. though, haven't you? Yeah. Tell Back me about New that. York. Yeah, tell me how you um, started doing my that. My mom was always kind of a matchmaker. She worked in a big bank in Brooklyn, and people would come and go, and she had a lot of coworkers, and she always matched people up. So I kind of grew up watching her be excited and make phone calls and this one and that one. Right. And so as I got older, it kind of just became... A natural thing like I would meet somebody maybe at work or you know at a restaurant or something and I would think oh my gosh they would go really well with so-and-so mm -hmm. and it just I became like a yenta like they <laughs> like they say right um, and I just kind of started you know saying like I think I have somebody that might be good for you and you know first got to make sure everybody's single yeah right <laughs> and um, it just kind of organically just came to be it just that and you couldn't help yourself, right? I, yeah, I can't help myself. <laughs> it's true because right. I, you know, nosy body. Well, the thing is, I think you are such a people person. Yeah. And when you get to know different people, you see where there could be relationships. Mm -hmm. And whether it leads to a marriage as such or it's mm -hmm. just a, a friendship or right. something, you want to be a part of bringing people yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really a good thing. Yeah, I think so, too. And it makes me feel um, really fulfilled. Uh-huh. Because when you see people fall in love mm. or, or at the wedding ceremony, they're so in love, yeah. it just does something. It, it changes the air around you. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. It is. Hence the heart that you're wearing, right? Hence yeah. the heart. <laughs> Do you know offhand how many couples that you've married that you've been some sort of part in matching them up? Um, back in New York, I would say probably about seven. Okay before we moved here. Okay. Over here, 
it's harder because I'm not originally from here. Mm -hmm. So to approach people with my New York personality, <laughs> I don't want to scare people, so I kind of <laughs> lay back. But I would say probably five maybe so far. Okay. Okay, well, that's yeah. an amazing track record, yeah. though, really. And then I officiate for them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's and fun. It's, and you know, it's a part of their path and a part of their journey. Right. And I think having you marry them, it just brings it yeah. all to fruition. And then I baptize their babies. Yeah. And, and all uh, of yeah, that. I become oh, part of the family. Well, that's great. You yeah. do. So I love your it. family is huge, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, you are starting a matchmaking service here in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, I'm sure, for all different ages. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot that's going to be going on. but. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to tell you all about it. So stay with us. LCTV 66 is your community channel, and your donations keep us on the air and help to produce more local programs. Send your tax-deductible donation of 500 100 or more to the address on the screen. Or think of it this way. For the price of a couple of movie tickets, you can help support your community channel. Send what you can and be a part of all that is good about Lancaster County. Thank you for your tax-deductible donation to LCTV 66, Lancaster's Connection. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking with Reverend Rini Panzini, or just Rini as most Rini. of us know too. We've talked about officiating and now we're going to talk about matchmaking, like matchmaker, matchmaker, make, make me, me a match. match. <laughs> well, you have been doing this for years mm -hmm. and now you've really decided to hit the ground running with the matchmaking service, yeah. which is really called Matchmaker Rainy Panzini. Yeah. Okay. So to do this, you've got to get your base of singles. Right. How has that been so far? So um, it's getting there. Okay. I'm trying to freshen up my database. And, you know, women, it's easier to get women to want to sign up. Right. It is not easy to get men to sign up. Okay. So I've put it out there on Facebook and everybody's sharing. And if you're not single but you know somebody's single, send them to me and they'll go into the database. And the database is um, what we will then have single parties, like okay. ming minglers. Like a mixer type Mixers, of thing or yeah. something? Okay, mix and mingle. So the okay. database will be people that get invited to the mixers. And then the database is also where I will find matches. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have started to get some of women, but I know mm -hmm. it's been a little hard for guys. But yeah. you are bold about this. I'm trying. And you walk out <laughs> and you approach single men sometimes. Right. <laughs> yes. I have right? a business card that <laughs> says matchmaker on it. Okay. So that way they don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'll go up to a guy who you know, is in the right age range. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll say, are you single? <laughs> and then they kind of get the look like, oh no, she's crazy. <laughs> right. And then I right away give them my card because I'm a matchmaker and okay. you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And please email me or, right. so we've got a couple, yeah. but we need more. We need more, we need more okay. men. All right, well, that's good. So what we need to know about how you do this and how different this is from other things out there because there's mm -hmm. a lot of different matchmaking mm -hmm things but it's the personal touch that I think you're bringing to this right. with putting together the individuals mm -hmm. after they fill out information right what type of things do they need to tell you about so it's a very very long informational form that everybody gets to fill out and it goes all the way from religion how you feel about money to simple things like your favorite color and your favorite food and just a whole bunch of questions that maybe some are a little too personal. You don't have to answer those. Okay. But just um, to have as much information as I can, mm -hmm. that way I can match up the proper yeah. couples. Well, it's a lot like what you've been doing with officiating yeah. and bringing people together yeah. to get married. So it totally makes sense. Yeah. So the way this works, it starts initially with mm -hmm. filling that out. Yes. Right? Okay. So the next step is what? So the next step would be... Um, the mixers will be separate from the matchmaking. Okay. So I'll have this database, and then if somebody wants to be matched up, they'll come to me, and I'll match them up with trying for three different people okay. that, per their questionnaires, would make a good match, and then we'll set them up on dates, and okay. off they go. All right. And we'll see what happens. Okay. But they have to come to me first. That okay. way I know they want to be matched. Okay. I'm not going to push it on anybody. Well, the way that the mixers yes. mingle work 
Is there an invitation then given out to those that have filled out? Yes, the okay. people that have already filled out the questionnaire and are on the database will be invited to the mixers. Okay. And from there, they can say like, oh, I, you know, I'd like to be set up with this one or that one. Of course, they can always you know, meet each other Together, and say, yeah. let's go out. Right. But yeah, so it'll be from that database, everything will okay. come out. All right, so I know that you're just putting this together, so we don't yeah. necessarily know all the frequency with anything right. yet or where it's going to be held. Right. But I'm assuming it would be at, whether it would be uh, at a restaurant mm -hmm. or uh, perhaps a wine tasting room. Right. Or uh, at a nice hotel area mm -hmm. where you can do mm -hmm. some snacks and that sort of thing yeah. as well. Yeah, it would definitely be in a, a nice place somewhere where maybe they have a private room okay. um, where there are things to keep you occupied so everybody's not just looking at staring each at each yeah. other. <laughs> You're right. Which right, happens. Right. Yeah. Well, well, here's some of the things that people ask too. You know when you go to online services, mm -hmm. you don't really always know right. whether this person is, shall we say, okay? Right. <laughs> so what are you going to be doing to ensure that? So um, when people come to me for matchmaking, I will have background checks done on the people that I'm sending them out with okay. and, of course, the person that's asking. Once they have the questionnaire filled out, that's just for the mixers. Mm -hmm. But when they want to be matched up, I'll have the background checks done okay. just to be safe. Right. Right. That way. Yeah. Okay. And what I think, too, is important is that I know you're going to be conversing with both people. Yep. Probably even after, like, the date. We'll sure. follow up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people don't really know how to date. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, it's hard now, especially especially now with the swipe left and swipe mm -hmm. right and dating to them is maybe seeing a face and saying, oh, I, I like that face. I'll swipe left. That's right. Says bizarre. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're used to like you go somewhere, you meet someone, you mm -hmm. talk to them, you see what you have in common. Yeah. Then eventually you decide if you want to go on a date. Mm -hmm. And these are just kind of, I like the way this person looks. I want to go on a date, but you don't know. Who you're no. going out with. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. And that could last two minutes. Right. 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 <laughs> That's, it's just not. I also think, and maybe we should do a roundtable with this, yes. what dating really is. Mm -hmm. Because I think we all have different definitions. Mm -hmm. And we're not necessarily coming together with the same definition of right. dating. Expectations are different. Right. Absolutely. And that's something that I think needs to be addressed as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Maybe there should be classes for that, right? Yes. <laughs> there you go. We'll have to do that too. Absolutely. This age breakdown is going to be how? So I'm um, going to do 28 to 40. Okay. And then 41 to maybe 52. And then 52 to around 63. And then possibly a senior group. Okay. All right. Yeah. And we can fudge a little bit right, on those right, parameters right. Yeah, too. Yeah, I'm not going to be like let me yes, see your well, ID. Oh, no, you just had a birthday, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Okay. All right, so that's, and it's going to be um, men and women. It's mm -hmm. going to be same sex as yep. well. So it's going to yeah, be, all once again, I mixers. do for all. Yes. Okay. I do for all. Wow. <laughs> this is exciting. This is quite an undertaking. Yeah. Maybe we should also look at possibly doing the dating game and bringing that back, too. Yes. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's I think, do it. And, you know, especially after going through a pandemic that we did mm -hmm. and people were isolated for mm -hmm. so long. Getting back out there again and having right. a relationship again, I think it's really important, isn't it? I yes, know you, you hear that too, don't you? Definitely. People, I think, are lonely and I think maybe some people lost their social skills because they were home alone and you need to maybe little by little get back there with somebody supporting you like me saying, you can do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Wow. So the thing that really makes this different I think, is the personal touch yeah. that you have, the fact that you are extensively looking into interests and values mm -hmm. and beliefs, which I think is core to right. a long-lasting relationship. Right. Because you do want a friendship with this right. as well, right? Yeah. I, I don't want to match people just to match them. I want yeah. to match them so they'll have something long-term, whether it's a friendship or, or a partnership. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. What have I forgotten to ask you? Is there anything that you want to add to this that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I don't think so. I want to say if you're single or you know somebody single who wants to be matched, you can email me okay. at revreeny at gmail.com. Okay. And the website yeah. is, there's actually two that you two. have, right? Yes. We have idoforall.com. 
and renipanzini.com. That's my name. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to put that up on the screen as well. But yeah. that's also where we can get information to if mm -hmm. you have found someone and yeah. you want to get married yeah. to or you're just in the process. Yeah. So I think this is really a good idea where people can reach out to other people because that does happen very mm -hmm. often. People try to set people up. Right. And sometimes it can be a catastrophe. Right. And then you, somebody stops talking to you. Well, yeah. and Because it's not just because you're single and you're single, let's get you together. Right. Yeah, right. that doesn't that work. Doesn't no, work. No, no, it doesn't work. So what you have is a way that it's a journey. Yeah. Like we've talked about before. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to this, and perhaps we can even do another show after you've matched somebody up with all of this, too, Yeah, right? that'll be cool. Yeah, I think it will be, too. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being here You're today. Welcome. and Thank, thank you, for, you for having me. Thank you for bringing love yeah. <laughs> to, to Lancaster from, uh, from Brooklyn. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about. That's it's all right. about love. That's right. It is about love. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.